Morning. Uh, thank you for being here this morning uh, for the March Scholars uh, Roundtable and Forum, uh, where we are concentrating this month on uh, Women's History Month. And we are really, really uh, proud and excited about the uh, event that we're going to have this morning. And that's why we're getting, uh, getting started right on time because we have an exciting hour for you. Uh, just a couple of things uh, to bring to your attention before I turn this over to the presenters today. Uh, you have in front of you, uh, the attendance sheet should be started. I have one on each side, I believe. So please make sure that you sign the attendance sheet. You also have uh, release forms in front of you. If you will sign those, we'll pick those up. If you'll uh, complete those, we'll pick those up at the end of the session. So if you uh, would kindly do that uh, for us. Uh, I also want to announce that uh, uh, next month, just, to, just so that you put this on your calendar, uh, save the date for our regularly scheduled uh, Scholars Forum, second Wednesday, as you know, of the month. And uh, next month, we have coming to us Dr. Rhonda Cheval. And Rhonda is coming to us with this title, American Jewish Communities. Uh, access to education, and more specifically to higher education. So don't miss that one as well. I'm just trying to get some things out to you that I want you to put uh, on your, uh, in your calendar and we have you. As we look at uh, Women's History Month, we understand that uh, it began as a week in uh, 1911. And then in 1987, Congress expanded it to a month. And then in the year 2011, President Obama released a report highlighting 50 years of progress for women. I don't have that report, I have not read it, but I just wanted to share that with you because you may want to read up on these sort of things. We also say Happy St. Patrick's Day to all of you. You have somebody, hey, I saw some green. Some shades of green. <laughs> and we also want to thank uh, Dr. Maureen McDermott for your treats that you have in front of you. Let's give Maureen a round of applause. And again, thank you so much for being here. I am now going to turn uh, the program over to Dr. Tatiana Martinez. Thank you. Thank well, you're welcome, her. Thank you, and welcome, everyone. There are still seats up here, please. Come, come, come over here so you can get some treats. There are a couple here, over here too. I don't know if there's three over here, but there's one more. There's one over here. There's one over here. One, there are two here and one here. Well, welcome everyone. Um, as you know that uh, this, we have uh, been invited to present at this um, Scholars Forum today, and we want to, I would like to introduce to you those of us who were, have been, or are responsible for the, this presentation today. I want to start with Dr. Linda Simonick, the Executive Director for Title V. It was her idea, and she's the one who found the book, It's Not a Glass Ceiling, It's a Sticky Floor. We'll talk a little bit more about that later on. And, um, when Dr. Simonet had this idea, Sonia Smith, who is the Executive Director of Recruitment, and I ran with the idea and thought it would be a good idea to present it to a forum such as this. Then Dr. Gary Brown, who is the uh, designer or an uh, instructional designer for Title V, put our idea into a technological uh, view or event, as you can see. So, and then Sonia felt that it would be very important to bring someone from Maine campus. As you know, we are reaching out for collaboration, and she invited, or she recruited, um, Maureen Simonek Appelt, who is the learning manager of the university's uh, human resources. Office. So we welcome her as well. And we'll hear more. So, as I said before, we're honoring Women's Month, and we thought it would be a good idea to um, kind of uh, select some 
successful women that we thought, or we think are su successful women. And some of you have submitted some names that we will be talking about in just a little while, and we have se selected some women as well. In that, uh, we would hope to kind of discuss what is it that has made them successful, and how maybe perhaps we can use some of those um, successes or attributes and, and apply them to our own career development. I don't know if you've noticed that recently in the, um, in the news and in magazines, et cetera, et cetera, women in the, work, women in the workplace, um, there seems to be a new interest in women in the workplace, women leaders, and of course, women's pay. And uh, I'd like to give you a little bit, a couple of numbers. As you know, men love numbers. So we need to look at some numbers ourselves. 51% of the population of the United States are women. 47% of those women are in the workforce. 4% of those are CEOs. 17% of those are members of boards, school boards, boards of directors, et cetera, in the nation. The rest of us are aspiring somewhere along the line to move forward. So that's basically the topic or the idea of this presentation. As you know, we have, we have selected the book. It's not a glass ceiling, it's a sticky floor by Rebecca Shambaugh. Uh, Rebecca wrote this book in 1998, and her, the, the purpose of the book is to tell women or to share with women some ideas of how to get ahead, how to really be successful. And as you know, in uh, just to give you a little history and a little background as to where this women's issue or women issues started, we have in 1964, we had the Civil Rights Act, which prohibited gender discrimination. And in the last 30 years, more women have graduated from college than men. However, according to Cheryl Sandberg, who is the COO of Facebook and on the cover of Time Magazine, and her article is, <coughs> And her article, a copy of her article is in your uh, handout, so you can read it later. It's very, very interesting. We'll be talking a little bit more about her. And Maureen selected Cheryl as her woman that she seems, she feels is very successful and to be um, studied and looked at for our own purposes. She said that this academic governance referring to the fact that in the last 30 years, more women have graduated from college than men. She calls this academic governance. Uh, has not been, it's not corresponding to women being successful in business nor in politics. So there is some, something happening there. There's a, there's a gap, so to speak. She seems to feel, as does Rebecca, so we're talking about a woman in 2013, and we're talking about a woman in 1998 who wrote the book, The Sticky Pole. They both kind of have the same idea. Cheryl refers to her, to the sticky floor, as that sisters are doing some of this to themselves. In other words, we are probably not knowingly, not realizing it, purposely, you know, we're not sadistic in that sense, but we are not realizing that some of the things that we do are really hurting us to get ahead, should we want to get ahead. So I think that it's, um, so in that sense, we want to share with you, have, how many of you have heard of the, the term, the glass ceiling? Is that something you've heard of? What would you say would be a good definition of the glass ceiling? Anybody? Take a stab at it. A glass ceiling. What does it mean to you, the glass ceiling? Yes? I would say it's a perceived stopping point. 
preventing people to know whether it's imaginary or real. Very good, exactly that. The definition, of course, is exactly what Dr. Um, Macrina has said. It's the glass, it's a metaphor, really. It's a figure of speech uh, for the unseen yet unbreakable barrier that keeps women from reaching the upper rungs of their employment settings regardless of their qualifications and achievement. Now, It's, it's a perceived kind of thing, because there really isn't a glass ceiling in every organization that we work with, or every place. There is not really such a thing that prohibits us from, um, is there another chair? There's another chair over here, and I think it can uh, sneak through here. So then, Rebecca says, Rebecca Schomburg about the sticky floor says, it's really not that glass ceiling. That's just a perception that we have. It's really the sticky floor. And what's keeping us down there are things that we create ourselves. She defines the sticky floor as it represents things that women are doing or not doing that are holding them from their career successes. That's, Sha that's Rebecca in 1998. And Cheryl in 2013 says, sisters are doing some of this to themselves hurting themselves or keeping themselves from moving forward. So with that, uh, we, she, in addition to the, this broad definition, there are a couple of more uh, points that uh, Rebecca, in her book, The Sticky Floor, talks about. She says that we're not being aware of one of our own values, that we probably stay in one place too long. We are probably perfectionists. This getting things right to a standard that is probably higher than is expected. Not building strategic relationships <coughs> with individuals who could advocate for you. She calls it our board of directors. That's what she calls it. No political savvy. Well, learning who needs to know and what they need to know and why or about you, putting yourself out there. What do they need to know about you that they do not know? Not making your words count, learning the correct language, how to talk to your bosses. Interesting points, right? I am going to turn it over now to our guest facilitator and guest. Maureen Simonek Appout. She will lead us through. So thank you all for having me here today. Um, I survived I-95, so I feel very, very accomplished <laughs> as a woman today. One of the things when we were really talking about this and Sonia and Tatiana were brainstorming on things to do, is I said I think that we really are most successful when we're interactive. And there was a thought of really giving you kind of a map as you walk out of here. Now, we've spoken a lot in the framework of women because this is Women's Month. However, I see some men in the room. And all of you, I'm sure, have been touched by a woman in your life, either you're supporting a woman in your life. Yes, hopefully, you know, not inappropriately in the workplace, but <laughs> in HR. So, but there, there are women in your life who either supported you or you are supported your mother, your sister, your spouse, etc. And so within the framework of Women's Month, maybe you can come out with some strategies to help those in your life that might need this extra help. Because I know for me, without the support of the men in my life as well as the women, I wouldn't I wouldn't have as much success as I do, although no nowhere near where the women we're talking about. So some of the women, um, and we asked those as Dr. Um, Dr. Martinez. Tatiana. I'm so used to calling her Tatiana. As Tatiana alluded to before, Maureen said that one of the women who really she admired was in that article that you have now. But there are other women. There are other women who we all know who have really kind of shattered the glass ceiling. And you will recognize, hopefully, a lot of these women broken through that barrier. Rosa Parks, 